I found a book at the library I wanted to share with you, and it is a very large book uh, called Noah's Ark by, uh, the author is Dutch, he's a famous illustrator, Reen Por Porvli, I think is how it's said. Um, here's his picture. He's uh, quite famous in Holland and he is um, he was a, a book illustrator and um, an artist and he, he was really passionate about art but his father wanted him to do something more serious uh, so he did become an illustrator um, at first but he's done a lot of fine art as well and this book um, is so uh, charming um, it would be great for kids there's actually scribbles in it I got it at the library so I'm sure some kids have been looking at it but uh, it's been out for a while it's pretty beat up so I think it's it's probably it looks kind of like 80s ish let me just see if I can find out when it was published 1986 so yeah that's about right um, but what I really like about this book um, whether or not you believe in Noah's Ark um, he actually tells it in a way uh, he's not trying to be religious really but uh, just to tell the story of Noah's Ark and all the animals and he has such a love uh, for the animals you can just see it in all their expressions so I just want to share with you, uh, um, let's open it up and take a look. There are a lot of styles of um, his work in here, including uh, like this pencil sketch here. And um, this might be in pastel or um, colored pencil, but um, he also has oil paintings and watercolor. I like how he does this illustration to kind of show him in his studio and he talks about things like when I feel that a painting is finished I put it aside in a way that lets me keep an eye on it and while working at something new I look around from time to time then sometimes all at once in retrospect I see what bothers me this painting for instance so um, the boars climb through the ditch onto the farmland, in itself not unusual because they really came that way, but still that great empty space where absolutely nothing happened was frankly boring. So a change. So here we have them up here. So he changed the painting and um, where is this going? Um, he talks about how he covered this deer up and put them in the foreground here to make the space look more vast and open. What he really liked about these paintings is um, he says something, um, this kind of thing you sometimes notice only afterward, um, after it's done. Um, so it was that I could not define for some time what these two paintings kept reminding me of. Um, great dark skies, the water, and one lonely bird until suddenly I had it. Noah's Ark! Noah's Ark seen between treetops on Mount Ararat. So that's how we get started. He talks about the flood, he's got Genesis here, but what I really like about this book is all his um, he does go into um, a lot of details about uh, more than you'd get from the Bible about the story of Noah's Ark uh, with maybe how things would have been and how according to the directions they would have been or the um, the details in the story of, in the Bible and uh, so as far as that is concerned it's really cool but I just love his beautiful depiction of all the animals of how um, the magnitude of the ark and what would have been involved but um, again um, he's got fun little sketches next to really detailed portraits often um, just close-ups of faces that you can just tell he has a love for the wildlife but then he also um, besides 
the close-ups has these uh, beautiful landscapes. This is an illustration that's very detailed that he got from the Great Bible of Mortier of 1702. Actually, I've never been able to figure out exactly what to do with a sieve. I have tried it out now and then, but never succeeded in catching even one shrimp with this thing. But just think of having this ark with animals and then sitting comfortably in a lukewarm inlet even more real with rainy weather. But when I was little, there were none of these faithfully re reproduced toy animals. What I did have was a small zoo made by my good father from my bed, which was put in the back parlor. I was knocked down by a car. I could keep an eye on things. Those were fine evenings. I still hear the vishy, vishy, vishy of the jigsaw. <coughs> Three of the cages with screening. I myself had first drawn the animals on plywood. Nowadays, there are those beautiful three-dimensional animals, but really too late. I do have them now, a big tin full, but now I'm 51. And aside from displaying them on a table, now and then, I honestly do not know what to do with them, maybe later for the grandchildren. So I like all his uh, storylines that come, uh, stories of some of the animals in their natural habitats and different seasons. We've got some children's scribbles here. There's so many beautiful sketches and complete drawings. I'm just so in love with this book. Some dogs, a little birdie, a little snail. He takes so much time to just notice animals and wildlife and things that a lot of people would take for granted and has such I think a reverence for even like the bugs there is one thing I wanted to show you that was really just endearing to me and um, just I just felt so um, warm in my heart and touched by um, these illustrations he did. Mm -hmm. 